It is with great honor that I introduce to you our Washington Realtors and AR Director, here to give us an update on all that is going on from his perspective with the National Association of Realtors. My friend and yours, Rich Bergdahl. Special Agent Rich Bergdahl. Look at that picture. Wow, that says power. Can you guys hear me? I can now. Sorry, I had you muted. I'm on now. Okay. Let me step in a conference. I'm new at this, and, and that is a very tough act to follow. Tina Mitchell, that was great. Yeah, she, um, she's a pro. Yeah, well, this is an honor being here. I've never done this before, but just to give a little background on myself, I'm one of uh, 11 Washington State NAR directors. I was elected two years ago by the board at Seattle King County Realtors. Um, I've been a realtor for 16 years. I've been a licensed Washington State real estate attorney for 23. I'm really involved at the Seattle King County Board of Realtors. I'm on board there. I'm on the board of the Washington Realtors. And the last three years, I've been an NAR director. All my volunteer time um, goes to the Realtor Association. I don't do anything, for example, with the Bar Association. And the reason I say that is I love this organization because it's such grassroots. It's non-religious, non-political, it's men and women of all ages, of all faiths, in every corner of every county. So um, I did this for 13 years as a realtor before I ever went to an NAR event. Uh, happened to go three years ago, and it just amazed me the power that our association has, not only at the local and state level, but also the national level. So those of you that are newer in the business, I encourage you to not do what I did and waited so long to get to an NAR event. There's two events each year. There's one in the, the biggest one, about 30, 35,000 people in the fall. Last year was New Orleans. This year it will be in San Diego. Great event. The one I tend to like a little more because I'm kind of a government uh, junkie is the May event, which just occurred this last month in D.C. And so every year it's the week right after Mother's Day. And it's really neat because it's an opportunity for us to um, – as one of 11 directors from Washington, when we're there, we're 11 of 870 directors across the nation. And this is an opportunity for us to sit in front of our senators and uh, representatives like Patty Murray, uh, uh, Dave Reichert, all of them from the state of Washington. And we get to talk to them about the issues that concern us. And really what concerns us is uh, quality of life in our neighborhood. Being such a grassroots organization, whether they agree with us or not, we got a great lobbying uh, a group because they do have to listen to us. We're in every corner of every county and of their of their uh, constitu constituency in, in uh, uh, districts. The issues this year that were big in uh, D.C. have been big since I've been going back for three years, and any one of these alone would really be a daunting thing to discuss regarding uh, our industry and what we do and the quality of life in our neighborhoods. However, these four keep coming up because of the budget deficits and everything else. And one is uh, we're there encouraging to protect the mortgage interest deduction. Every year a discussion comes up to do away with that. So that's, that's huge in and of itself. Another one, especially since 08 and 09, is to do away with FHA loans. Well, FHA is such a big part of the fabric of our communities that, you know, not everybody has a parent that can help them with a down payment or give them a leg up to get in a house when they really are a good credit risk. So we're there encouraging to protect the FHA loan, which probably has been around for about 100 years. I mean, it's, it's as integral to, uh, to our country and financing as jazz is to our music. Uh, another big issue, certainly since uh, 08 and 09, is to not do away with Freddie and Fannie reform and restructure them to keep them around to continue the existence of the 30-year mortgage because without those, the 30-year mortgage would disappear. And again, not everybody uses that product, but you know, I liken that to jazz music. The 30-year mortgage is something that is 100% American. It was created here uh, to make housing more affordable. 
to get more people the American dream to get them in their houses. Well, what happened in 08 and 09, there was a big push to do away with these programs. So if we did lose Freddie and Fannie, we'd lose the government back insurance on these programs. And you'd start seeing what I hear they have in uh, Canada and elsewhere, more of a five, seven-year mortgage with the banks uh, make their money up front and like to turn the product over. So that's three very important things that are on the chopping block every year that we're there pushing back on. Another big one this year, especially from the commercial side of uh, real estate, is a talk to do away with 1031 exchanges. Um, again, this just comes to tax reform. And if they're going to reform the tax code, well, they got they got to get uh, revenues from somewhere, and the discussion is to do away with 1031. Well, 1031s are, uh, again, another big in, in, uh, vehicle in our communities that encourage people to turn properties over, to encourage people to buy up, invest more capital, and buy bigger properties, thereby not only creating business transactions, but also freeing up properties at the lower end, which are more affordable to a wider group of people. So. Uh, just all these things are, are big on the radar. Another one that's come up too is net neutrality. Kyoki can probably speak to this a little more than I can, but it's basically keeping the, the internet open and free and fair to all people and not create tollings on the delivery of uh, information. So that's a lot. That's, you know, if anybody wants to learn more about that, feel free to reach out and, and I can talk to you in great detail about it. But, um, what I really want people to get a sense of from what I do is how valuable our associations are. There's no other industry out there that has a structure of the Realtor Association where you have a local, state, and a national uh, association network protecting what we do. Because really, if there wasn't the Realtor Association, we wouldn't be doing this today. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, the Bar Association doesn't have that. The American Medical Association doesn't have it. So when you get those $600 uh, realtor dues bills uh, in January and you have anybody questioning what the associations do for us, uh, send them my way. Because without uh, a presence in uh, state, local, and national uh, forums, uh, this industry would evolve so quickly into something that we wouldn't even recognize. So anyway, that's a lot of information in a short amount of time. I'm really uh, honored to be able to speak to you guys. And Kiyoki, I think you need to get your own radio station since your name starts with K. Don't egg this on. Do not egg this on, Rizal. <laughs> he needs a big K-E-O-K -E behind him. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. So okay, well, hopefully that made a little sense. And, it absolutely did, and it is such an honor to have you um, share with us what you do. And I don't, I hope all of you recognize what an honor it is to have our, one of our NAR directors here. This is pretty crazy. Are there any questions for Rich? It looks like Kiyoki's almost chomping at the bit over there. I know he's got something going on at his sleeve. Oh no, no, I, I'm just, uh, I'm always chomping at the bit. This is, I'm. Uh, you, Rich has that effect on him, you guys. I'm not sure what no. it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a, there is a guy named Super DJ Kiyoki, and I think I'm channeling him. I don't know if you've oh, ever good. Good. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's kind of the grandfather of techno music. He's one of the first people that he's. I think he's older than me, and he's one of the first people to do like raves and stuff where they go in and. and he would wear all yellow leather and and just yellow plastic. I mean, it was not even pleather. It was not even pleather. <laughs> plastic, plastic. And I'm gonna we're gonna have to pull that picture out again, Kiyoki, and show it to everybody. I know everybody's waiting for that. Yeah, we'll do that I got on our next meeting. Yeah, for sure. That was a good no shot. <laughs> you know, I just want to add one thing too for those of you at Real Living Northwest. You really got a great opportunity if you haven't gone to an NAR event. You got two people there that go regularly in your office, and Kyoki and Stephanie, and they're involved. I know they would uh, be great uh, tour guides and sources of information, as they are for me when I'm there with them. So um, they get it, and you're very fortunate to have someone in your office as active as they are in the association. I'll slip you the 20 later. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, no, thank you. This was uh, this was very awesome, and uh, that is what's going on in uh, in the world of NAR. It is it is fascinating, and Rich is very involved and uh, is a good person to know. And he truly means it when he says, "Call him if you ever have questions or if you want to get more involved," because I I know he would help. Um, awesome. Thank you, Rich. It's got to be real.